Okay, so welcome to College Algebra. How is everyone today? Good? Cold? Yeah. Okay, so the exam is on Saturday. It's at 11. Uh, it will, the room is not yet posted in the grade book, but it will be today. And it is not the same room as before. Okay, it's a different room. But it's on campus, obviously. So uh, be sure to find that room before the exam. Okay, it would be unwise to just know the room number and then <laughs> by the time the exam starts you still haven't found the room. Okay, um, <clears throat> so the exam is going to, uh, I, I sent instructions last night about the exam. Uh, the exam is going to consist of two parts, a mandatory part which is like taking a long, a long quiz of six questions instead of three and then the optional part where you start doing redo questions for for quizzes. Okay, so the the written homework written homework 63 th to the end uh, keys will be posted for those today. So you'll have a key for a, a, a PDF and a video key for everything at that point. <clears throat> so any questions about that? Any questions about that? Okay, so we just have a little bit more material uh, about logarithms to do. I've got good news. Uh, that is that, so today's the last lecture, and we're going to end the lecture with, with a terrific joke. Okay, but to set it up, okay, I have to let you know it. I've, I've got to give you a bit of the setup right now so that when the joke comes, it, I don't have to give you... I don't have to explain it at the, en at the end. So in the first place, there's, there's w one standard joke about biology, that biology is, is the only science in which multiply means divide. Right, because cells, when they multiply, they're actually dividing. <laughs> Funny. Okay, so uh, another thing that you need to know to understand the, 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 the ultimate joke at the end is that uh, an archaic name for snakes is adders. Right, so then, in fact, I think there's specific kind of snakes that are called adders. Okay, so adder is like a synonym for snake. Okay, so now let's get to business. So, uh, <clears throat> we're talking about logarithms, and it enables us to solve equations like the following. So, something like 5 to 7x plus 3 is equal to, uh, say, 9. Okay, so we want to solve an equation like this. We, don't, we want to figure out what x is. Okay, so how do we do it? Gesundheit. So what do you think? Yeah? Very good. So this, this uh, equation this equation is presently an <coughs> exponential uh, base 5. So it's an exponential base 5. We can't get away, we can't get away from the fact that it's in base 5. That cannot be avoided. But the only way it could possibly be avoided is if we knew how to represent 9 in base 5 easily. But off the top of your head, I suspect that you, it, you can't do it off the top of your head easily. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to change the equation so that it, it is still in base 5, but we're going to change from exponential to what? Logarithmic. Which is to say that this 7x plus 3 will still be on, on its side, on the left side, but now it won't be in the exponent, and the 9 will still be on its side, but what is moved is the base 5, and when it moves from the left-hand side in exponential, it moves to the right-hand side as logarithmic. So log base 5 of 9. So it's still in base 5, but now it's in logarithmic base 5. So exponential base 5, switching sides, 
logarithmic base 5. So any question about this? This action? So now, log base 5 of 9, I mean, you know, off the top of my head, I have no idea what number that is. I know that it's more than 1 and less than 2. That's the best I can do. Closer, closer to 1 than it is to 2. Okay, it's just some number. In the same sense that the square root of 51 is a number, but off the top of your head, you probably can't think. You probably don't know exactly what number it is. So that, that is irrelevant. We just consider this to be a number. And how do we solve for x? Subtract 3. So 7x is log base 5 of 9, and then minus 3. And now what? Divide by 7. Very good. So log base 5 of 9 minus 3, and then the divide, back, divide all that by 7. <coughs> OK. So um, this is the exact answer. Now suppose that I said, OK, I want you to give me an approximation to this answer to three places past the decimal. Okay, how would you go about doing that? Put it into the calculator. OK, so we need to plug it into the calculator. So on my calculator, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> my knuckle was resting on the zoom button. OK, just a minute. So on my calculator, I have a log. What base is that log? 10. Ten. And I have this one. What base is that one? E, right? The natural number, 2.7, blah, 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 blah. So I don't have a log base 5 number on my calculator. So what? Now what? Change the base. <laughs> Change the base. <laughs> Good catch. <laughs> uh, so, so. What we need to do is we need to remember the key piece of information that the log uh, base b of x can be expressed in terms of natural logs. How? So this is like log base b where b is something weird, like 5. How could we write this in terms of natural logs only? Yeah, the formula. <coughs> Very good. Ln x over Ln b. Okay, and in fact, uh, I'm a mathematician, so I, I tend to say this one. But it is in fact true that because of this formula, in fact, it works for any base. So if you just really liked log base 10, you could also do it like this, and that would be just fine. So that means that we can express log base 5 of 9 as log 9 over log 5 for any log button that we happen to have available to us. So log of 9 divided by log of 5 minus 3 and then divide that by 7. So this is still exact, but now this is something that we could type into the machine. So let's type it in. So I'll give you a moment to type it in. So when you type that in, in the machine, what do you get? to three places past the decimal. Anybody get it? Negative Very good. And then if I, it's got a five, so two, three, four, if it's rounded to, to three places. OK. So in case you're wondering how do you get your calculator to do, to do that, 
Uh, on my particular calculator, the sequence is open parentheses log 9 and then divide log 5 and then subtract 3 and then close parentheses divide 7. So that's what I have to type on my specific calculator. Uh, if you're having difficulty getting your calculator to do it, in the first place you need to get that straightened out right away. Uh, and I'll be happy to help you after class. So any question about this? Okay. So, so some brief matters about just reminders, really, about the shape of logarithms. So logarithms are the inverse of what? Exponentials. So just like exponentials sort of come in two flavors, logarithms also sort of come in two flavors. Uh, so, and it depends on the base. The, the most notable distinction between them is the base. So when you have a base between 0 and 1, exponentials have a certain characteristic behavior. And when you have exp uh, bases greater than 1, <laughs> that should say greater than 1, <laughs> they have a different characteristic behavior. So in both cases, on both axes, I want to plot in red y is b to x. So y is b to x. OK, so in either case, in either case, when you plug in x is 0, what do you get? You get, you get 1. So that means that in either case, this point is present. Okay, and then the characteristic behavior difference between these two now becomes apparent. So from this point right here, uh, when the base is between 0 and 1, what happens when you move to the right? It decays. It decays to 0. Okay, and then similarly, or inversely, as you move to the left, it grows. Okay, and then this one has the opposite behavior. So as you, from here, as you move to the right, what happens? Any takers? <laughs> it grows. <laughs> And then to the left, decays. So sort of typical, typical examples of something like this, like this one would be maybe radioactive decay. If you had a kilogram of U-235 and you were just had it in a pile there and, and you could somehow make that safe, <laughs> then if you hung around for 93,000 years, you'd still have a kilogram of material, but only half of it would still be U-235. The rest, the other half, would have decayed into other products. And then if you waited around for another 93,000 years, then you'd have only half of half of a kilogram, so a quarter of a kilogram, because, the, because half of the, of the remaining half would have changed into, decayed into other materials, etc. Uh, maybe sort of prototype for this one would be population growth, assuming unlimited resources. Uh, because populations grow in proportion to their current size if resources aren't limiting. So, for example, if you start a bacterial colony on a, on a dish, on a food dish, what are those called? Petri, petri dishes, dish. yeah. On a petri dish, if you start with just one, then after a little bit you'll have two, and then after a little bit more you'll have four, because those two would have each split. And then after a little bit more, you'll have eight, because those four would have split. And then you'll have 16, because those eight will have split, etc. So it's growing faster and faster, so like so. OK. So now, notice that both of these functions pass the horizontal line test, which means that they're invertible. 
And what is the inverse function of exponential base b of x? What's the inverse function? So what, what undoes exponential? Log. Yeah, log, good. So to find the to find the inverse function geometrically, it's equivalent to reflection across y is x. Okay, so then now, in both cases, what are the coordinates of this point? 0, 1. So there's 0, 1, and here is 0, 1. R remember that reflection across y is x transposes the coordinates, so what is the reflected point? 1, 0. One, zero. So this is point 1, 0, and this is point 1, 0. <coughs> Okay, now, this is a horizontal asymptote of y is 0, and this is a horizontal asymptote of y is 0. So they'll both reflect to a vertical asymptote of x is 0. But now, what I want you to observe is that this one decays in the positive direction. So it's a horizontal asymptote in the positive direction, which means that it will flip to a vertical asymptote in the positive direction. So what is the vertical positive direction? Down or up? So if you're if <laughs> on this axis, if you're going if you're going up and down, which one is the positive direction? Uh, up, right? Which is to say that this will reflect up like the following. And remember that when you're drawing these, these are supposed to look symmetric, right? The red flops to the blue and the blue to the red. So logarithms, when the base is, betwe is between 0 and 1, look like so. These are relatively uncommon in, in experience. So these kind, okay, this is a horizontal asymptote, but it's, it's a you know, in the negative direction. So this one will look like this. Okay, so typically speaking, this is what logarithms look like. So the blue are both logarithms, no doubt. Uh, but I'm just telling you, in, com in practical experience, essentially all the time, the base is more than one. <clears throat> OK. So now, suppose that I wanted you to plot something. So for example, uh, let's consider y is log base 2 of x. And suppose I wanted you to make a table of values. Okay, so I want to make a table of values. So let's come up with the values that are particularly easy to deal with. So we don't have a bunch of decimal places and all that. So so there is one point that is, that is on every single log. All logs share one point, at least, unless it's exactly the same log. So what's that one point that they all share? Mm -hmm. Up the other way. Yes. One, zero. one, zero, right? If you, plug, if you have any log whatsoever, if you plug in one, you'll get zero. The log base 10 of one is zero. The log base million of one is zero. One zero is on every log. One zero. That's that point right there. 
Okay, now, the, the values of x that are particularly easy to plug in are powers of the base. So what is the base of this log? Yeah. I mean two. two, right? So 2 to 1 would be, should be particularly easy to plug in. So what do we get if we plug in 2? We get 1. We get 1 because what I'm asking you to do, I'm asking you to, to compute log base 2 of 2, which is to say log base 2 of 2 to exponent 1. And remember that log and exponential are inverse functions. So I'm saying, OK, I want you to take a 1 and then compute exponential base 2 of 1. And then after you've done that, I want you to compute logarithm base 2 of the result, which is the same as saying, I want you to take 1 and do nothing. Just give me that 1 back, please. Thanks. Alternatively, if you don't like thinking of it that way, you could use the change of base formula to compute log base 2 of 2. What is the change of base formula for log base 2 of 2? log 2 over log 2, right? So log 2 divide by log 2. Well, I don't really need a calculator to tell me what that is, but okay, it's 1. Okay, fine. So what is another value that would be easy to plug into this log base 2? 3 would not be easy. 4 would be easy. Why would, so I, so just to make sure it's not, you know, you just got a fortunate guess. Why is it that 4 would be particularly easy to plug into this log? It's not because it's even. It's, it's not, that means even. So you, I know what you mean. I know what you mean, but you didn't say it quite right. It's not a multiple of 2, yeah? It's not that it's a, it's not that it's divisible by 2. It does have that, but that doesn't help either. It's that So, let let me let me say it like this. Before I before we plug in 4, what would be another value that would be easy to plug into log base 2? 8. 8. And what would be even another one? 16. 16. Now please explain to me why is it that these are the values that are easy to plug into log base 2? It's not because they're multiples of 2. It's because they're, yeah, exponents of 2, powers of 2. Okay? This is 2 to 0. This one is 2 to 1. That one is 2 to 2. That one is 2 to 3. That one is 2 to 4. Okay, so what is the logarithm base 2 of 4? It's 2. Now you could do it in a variety of ways, so I'm asking you to do logarithm base 2 of 4. On the one hand, you could use the change of base formula. Or you could say log of 4 divided by log of 2. You type that into the machine, and then... Oh, it's 2. What a surprise. But on the other hand, all that that means, all that means is that 4 is 2 to 2. Okay? So what is the log base 2 of 8? Three. It's 3. Again, you could type that into the calculator to verify if you found yourself unsure. And then the log base uh, 2 of 16 is what? Four. Four. So now, so <laughs> the reason why these were easy is because look at the values. Zero, one, two, three, four. <laughs> okay. So now, so what would be, I'm not going to do it, but what would be the next easy value after this one? 32. 32. And the output would be five. Now let's go in the opposite direction. From one, let's go to the left. What would be an easy value less than one? No, you can't plug negative values into log. 
Half. Half would be easy. Why would half be easy? Half of two is one. Okay, that's, a, that's, that's good. I like that. So, so moving in this direction, we were multiplying by two. So if we wanted to move, instead of going down, if we wanted to go up, you divide by two. But what I want you to observe is that half could be written as a power of two. What power of two? Two to what? Two to negative one. Two to negative one. Right? So then what is, what is the, lo the logarithm base two of half? Negative one. So logarithm base two of half is negative one. So now if you're, if you're unsure about that or, in, or incredulous, then I could just use the, lo the, the change of base formula and do, oops, too many parentheses, and do logarithm of half divide by logarithm of two and we get negative one. Okay, so what would be the, what, still moving to the left, what would be the next easy value to plug into logarithm base 2? Two? 2 1 fourth. Because, because 1 fourth can be written as a power of 2. What power of 2? 2 to negative 2. So what is the logarithm base 2? of one-fourth, negative two. So I won't do it now, but what would be the next easy value moving to the left? One-eighth, one and then one-sixteenth, <coughs> etc. So now, we could plot all of these. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we can plot all those points. Okay. Um, so when you plug in one, you get zero. That's the point that every logarithm has to go through. Okay, then when you plug in 2, you get 1, so 2, 1. And then when you plug in 4, you get 2. So over here to 4, 1, 2. And then when you plug in 8, you get 3. So this is 8. And then 1, 2, 3. And then to, get, to go one further high, to go one more up, I'd have to go all the way over to 16, which is, you know, here-ish. Uh, to move to the left, to half, at half, you're at negative one. And at one-fourth, you're at negative two. And then I've kind of run out of my ability to draw points and it still be intelligible. <coughs> so the result looks like this. So that's what logarithm base 2 looks like. Now, suppose that I asked you, given this plot, I said, OK, I want you to give me the plot of y is logarithm base 2 of x minus 3 uh, plus 1, say. Well, how, how, is this, how is this related to what we just did? Right, so what, what changes between the original plot and the plot that I'm now talking about? Yeah, up and down and all that kind of stuff. So notice that x changed to x minus 3. What does that mean? Yeah, all of the points need to move to the right by 3. 
So it, x changing to x minus 3 is like saying, OK, I'm going to hold my finger on the plot here, and I'm going to drag the whole axis to the left by 3. So 1, 2, 3. Okay. Or if you don't like that point of view, you can say, OK, I'm going to hold the axis still and move the plot to the right by 3. One of those two things is happening. In, e in either case, the plot appears to move to the right. So this would be right 3. And then what would this represent? Up, up 1. So this is the kind of thing that we did last time. So notice that this is a vertical, uh, I mean, by last time I mean eight weeks ago or whatever that was. So this is a vertical asymptote for the original plot. What is the vertical asymptote of this plot? So just three, right? Because it's, it's vertical. So at one, two, three, this is the new vertical asymptote. Okay, and then now we could just sort of mechanically move all the points. So I'll do that real quick. So everything needs to go right three and up one. So this point, one, two, three, and up one here. This point, one, two, three, and up one here. Uh, that one is too far, and then uh, one, two, three, and up one. Uh, this one, one, two, three, and up one here. And then uh, down one and here. Okay, so I moved all the points. That one fell off the edge, right? It's, it's over here somewhere. And then these look like this. Okay, interesting. Any question about this? So given a plot of a log, um, you could shift it around just like we've shifted anything else around. Now, for, the, for this plot, for the graphite colored one, what is the domain of this function? That is to say, what values can you plug into it? Remember, remember, what is the test, the visual test for domain? What's the vision? What makes it undefined? That's that's the analytic test. What could, what can you not plug in? So visually, let's l let's look at the red for a moment. Ignore the graphite. Just look at the red. What is the domain of the red function? Anything greater than zero, right? Stuff over here is not in the domain because there's no red point over here. There's no red over here. So negative x values, that's not part of the domain. Positive x values, yeah. You plug in anything positive. And then the domain peters out, runs out at uh, 0. So you can't plug in 0, but you can plug in any, anything greater than 0. So what's the domain of this one? Anything greater than 3. Right? <laughs> Anything greater than three. Okay? This is where you get graphite points. This is where you get red points. Okay, any question about this? Okay. <coughs> so now we can get to the joke. Nearly. Okay, so now um, besides the change of base formula which is very useful. Um, logs have these further properties. So uh, I'm not going to write the base, but understand that this is true for any base whatsoever. So the first property of logs is that the logarithm of a product xy, so x product y, usually, let me let me make that a little bigger. Usually uh, in math class, and just math generally, 
uh, you don't write the dot signifying product because it's so common that it's understood. When you write things side by side, that means product. But here, to make my point clear, I'm going to write it. So the log of a product is the sum of the individual logs. Log x plus log y. So the reason this is the case, the reason this is the case, in the end, is related to the following exponential um, realization. And that is that the exponential of x times the exponential of y so when you have things that have the same base and you're multiplying them, what do you do? Yeah. You add the exponents. So this, this log property is actually a, a reflection of, of this exponential property. So this is called, this log property is called the product to sum rule. And what I'd like to, you to observe is that product is inside the argument. Sum is outside the argument. Inside, outside. So for example, for example, let's verify that this is true. Uh, how about log base 10 of, say, 15? Well, on the one hand, on the one hand, we could just type this directly into the machine. Right? So log of 15. The machine says 1.176. On the other hand, on the other hand, how does 15 factor? 3 times 5, right? So this is, on the other hand, equal to the log of 3 times 5. So if we were to use the product to sum rule, then how can I write this as a sum? Yeah, log of 3 plus log of 5. So now let's type that into the machine. Log of 3 plus log of 5. And we get the same thing. OK, terrific. OK. So now log of x divide y. So log turns product to sum product to sum. So what will it do with this quotient? Subtraction, yeah. So quotient to difference. So this will be log of x minus log of y. Quotient is inside, difference is outside. Right? Inside, outside. So this is called quotient to difference. <coughs> So the last one, the last one is that log of x with exponent y, so x with exponent y is, does anyone know? <laughs> it's y multiplied by the logarithm of x, which is to say that logarithm, in a sense, you could say it kind of funny, like it lets the y come out to play. Right? It lets the exponent come out to play. Okay, so this is exponentiation to product.
Okay. <clears throat> so, for example, uh, for this one, I'll say, how about the logarithm of, say, um, well, 49. Logarithm of 49. Well, we could type that into the machine. Logarithm of 49. The machine says 1.690. On the other hand, on the other hand, can you think of a way to represent 49 but with an exponent? Seven squared. It's 7 squared, isn't it? So this is also the logarithm of 7 squared. But writing it in that way, that means that this exponent could come out to play, right? So how could you, how could you rewrite this using rule 3? Two, two times the logarithm of 7. Okay, so then let's type that into the machine. And we get the same thing. Okay. So now, historically speaking, logarithms used to be significantly, they, they used to have a place of importance uh, in arithmetic that has been supplanted by the fact that we have these machines. These machines have supplanted a, su a significant part of the day-to-day -day usefulness of logarithms. They're still very important, but not important in the way that they used to be. Uh, so, to make that point clear, I'd like for you to consider the following. So our course number is 1314. And then let's multiply this by, just for sake of argument, uh, 762. So do you remember doing this from grade school? Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm going to do it in the grade school way. So remember how it goes. You start out, you ignore the 7 and the 6, and you just deal with the 2. So I'll just deal with the 2. 2 times 4, that's 8. 2 times 1, that's 2. 2 times 3, that's 6. 2 times 1, that's 1. Sorry, <laughs> that's 2. What am I saying? My brain was temporarily out of service there. Okay, so now I've dealt with the 2 in a sense. So now I'm going to deal with the 6. But in order to deal with the 6, what do I need to do? Before I do anything else to deal with that 6, what do I do? Put a 0 under the 8, right? Because the reason why you do that is because that 6 actually represents 60. So now you do the multiplication. So 6 times 4, that's 24. So I write the 4 here and then carry the 2 to here. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 2 is 8. Uh, 6 times 3 is 18. So I write the 8 here and carry the 1. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So now I've dealt with the 6. Now I need to deal with the 7. So before I do anything with the 7, what do I need to do? Make two zeros here because that represents that that 7 actually represents 700. So now, 7 times 4 is 28. Write the 8 here. Carry the 2. 7 times 1 is 7 plus 2 is 9. 7 times 3 is 21. So 1 here, carry the 2. 7 times 1 is 7 plus 2 is 9. So now I have these three numbers. What do I do with them? Add them all, Add them all together. So then that column is 8. That column is 6. That column is 14 plus 8 is 22. So 2 here, carry a 2. That's 10, 12, 21. 1, <coughs> carry the 2. That's 10. So 0, carry the 1. That's 10. So do you remember doing this in grade school? Now, isn't it boring? Yeah, it's terribly boring. OK, now one thing I'd like to point out is that the number of, we did several single digit multiplications. How many did we have to do? 12. Oh. Right, because we had to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So the reason is because this one had four digits and this one has three digits. 12 single digit multiplications followed up by three additions. 
th three editions of six-digit numbers, right? Okay, so if I gave you two six-digit numbers, how many single-digit multiplications would you have to do? So this was a four and a three, and you had 12. So what if I gave you a six and a six? 36. You'd have to do 36 single-digit multiplications. And it would take you a little bit, because then you'd have to do six additions. It would be six of these instead of three. Okay, now let's imagine that you have to do this all day, every day, for 12 hours in shifts. And let's furthermore imagine that if you make a mistake or if you don't do it quick enough, we're all going to die. <laughs> Eventually, someone's just going to say, you know what? We're all just going to die. That's it. <laughs> I'm done. Tapped out. Okay, so, so in order to, the reason, one of the reasons historically why logarithms came up is because it was important to be able to do arithmetic quickly when you wanted to navigate, but you couldn't really <laughs> make someone do this for 12 hours. They just, they just say, no, forget it. We're going to die. Okay, so then, here is how you can do it. So what we want is we want this number, 1314 multiplied by 762. And to give it a name, let's call it x. So instead of comp doing this in this way, what I'm going to do is say, well, the logarithm of this number, the logarithm of what we're looking for, is this. But isn't there a rule that we can use on the left-hand side? Yeah, how could we write? How could we rewrite this? Very good. The log of one three one four plus the log of seven six two is the log of what we're looking for. So now let's imagine this is back in the age of sale when we don't have calculators. But what we do have is we've got a big old, very expensive book which contains the logarithm of all six-digit numbers. There's a, there's a million six-digit numbers. Okay? And we've got a table that, uh, that has the logarithms of all of them. So I'm going to look up in the table the logarithm of this number. And by that, I mean I'm going to use my calculator. So logarithm of 1314 is to, I'll do it to um, four places uh, past the decimal. So 311. Uh, 8, 6. And then the logarithm of 7, 6, 2, so also looking that up in the book, oops, okay, to four places past the decimal, that's 2.8820. Uh, that's the log of what we're looking for. So now that, well, you can do that by hand more or less quickly. So let's, write, so let's do that, and by that I mean I'm going to use my calculator. But, you know, oops. Okay, so then that is 6.0006. Okay, that is the logarithm of the answer that we're looking for which is to say that this is 6.0006 is the log base 10 of the answer we're looking for. So how do we get, this is in logarithm base 10. Mm -hmm. How do we get it out of log, what we need is inside. How do we get it out? This is the same thing that we did on the first page except in the opposite direction. It's in logarithm base 10. We put it in exponential base 10, because that puts the base on the other side, which is to say that 10 to 6.0006 is what we're looking for. Now, I've got another book that's also very expensive that has, instead of the, the logarithms of all six-digit numbers, it has the exponential base 10 of all six-digit numbers. So now I'm going to type that into my... I'm not type it. I'm going to look it up in the book. <laughs> and by that I mean I'm going to type it in the calculator. Okay, and typing that into the calculator and using uh, five digits, 
I get 1, 0, 0, 1, uh, 4, and then 0, 0 is equal to x. So is that close to the true answer? That's pretty close, isn't it? The true answer is about a million, and we were off by 130 or so. So if we're talking about a million dollars, and you're missing 100, well, that's like a rounding error. Okay? So this is enough. So what this is is that the, the big books where you look these up, they're called log tables and exponential tables. Okay, so the way this multiplication procedure works is you have the two numbers that you want to multiply. You do a lookup, lookup, add, lookup. So that's fast enough that you, you can set someone down and they can have two books open and they do a lookup, a lookup, an add, and a lookup. And then a lookup, and a lookup, and an add, and a lookup. And you can do that. And it's actually quite fast if, when you're trained at it. So here's the joke. <clears throat> An applied mathematician is walking through the forest. And it's springtime. And all the creatures, the butterflies, the birds, they're all multiplying in the way that creatures do their thing. Right? So they're, every, everything's so happy and so prosperous, they're all multiplying. But then the applied mathematician comes by some snakes, and they're sad. And the applied mathematician says, why are you so sad, snakes? And the snakes say, well, we can't multiply because we're adders. <laughs> and then the, the applied mathematician says, oh, no way, I can fix this. I can fix this. And then the applied mathematician goes and chops down a tree, does some mill work, assembles it into a table, and says, here, I've fixed it for you. And the snakes say, I don't get it. <coughs> and the applied mathematician says, well, even adders can multiply with a log table. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Okay, so have a nice Wednesday. See you at the exam.